Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss the implementation of GCN and GAT from scratch. And after that, we will be discussing the implementation of GCN and GAT using PyTorch geometric library in the benchmark datasets, which uh, of course, these are the datasets which uh, are used in most of the papers which are coming as a benchmark to compare their methods from the existing methods. So let's start in the graph convolutional neural network what we do is first we will simply import the libraries for various tasks and i'm using the pytorch so simply i'll import a uh, torch and in order to use the neural network functions torch.nn import nn and simply the i'll import the data module from the pytorch and for the optimization we will import torch.optim as optim and in order to check you can mm, use this line like uh, in your own system either you are using uh, cpu or gpu so for in my case i'm using gpu so that's why it will show you the cuda zero okay so after that we'll start implementing the graph convolutions so you already know the theoretical concept of this this has already been discussed in the class so what we'll do we'll simply jump to the implementation part so i'm defining the class gcn layer and in which i am inheriting the nn dot module so this nn you have already imported as you can see from tos dot nn and after that, so this is a very basic structure uh, of the PyTorch. In so this is how you can implement uh, like any model. So this is a very basic structure which we follow. And so, so next is the uh, we are going to pass two parameters C in and C out. And C in and C out. So basically these are the uh, like dimensions. So C in is the dimension of the input feature, and C out is the dimension of the output feature. Okay. So next, self dot projection. So basically, uh, this projection is two. So if you remember, in the uh, as in the class, it has been already told like whatever the node feature matrix you have, you will simply multiply those or you will project those using a weight matrix. So in order to do that, we are using self dot projection is equals to n n dot linear c in and c out. Okay. After that, we are going to de uh, define the forward function. So forward self node features and adjacency matrix. So in this, we are going to pass the node features and our adjacency matrix. So again, what are the node features? Tensor with the node features of say batch size, common number of nodes, and C in. That is the input dimension. So batch size again, it is optional. If you wanted to give the batch size, you can uh, give it. If you do not want to give the batch size, then it's uh, completely up to you. And adjacency matrix, you already know whatever graph you are providing. So you should provide the adjacency matrix of that too. And you need to remember while passing the adjacency matrix because we are considering the self node also. So we will be uh, providing the ones on the leading diagonal elements. So leading diagonal elements simply means we are adding a for loop. So this is simply doing adjacency plus uh, identity matrix. And what will be the shape like batch size comma number of nodes and number of nodes. I mean, this will be the uh, your uh, final output. So now what we have to do, we have to consider the number of neighbors. So how we are going to get the number of neighbors. So if we will do the summation of adjacency matrix along the uh, dimension minus one. And so this this is how we simply get our uh, number of neighbors. And the node features, so self dot projection. So now you are going to project the node features. So self dot projection is the layer you have already defined. So the node features will be projected uh, using this linear layer. And after that, what you need to do? So again, 
the node features will be toss.bmm so toss.bmm is nothing but batch wise matrix multiplication now what you will do you will multiply with the adjacency matrix to the node features and these node features are basically the projected node features projected node features uh, which are basically your original node features multiplied with the uh, your weight matrix and at the end uh, you have to like normalize normalize these so how you will uh, normalize node features is equals to node features that is your calculated node features divided by the number of neighbors so if you will see the paper you will find this the similar representation and it will finally return you the node features so this is what we do in the graph convolutional neural network we finally <clears throat> get our uh, node features after applying these many operations so i'll simply run this and in order to show you just for one iteration what i have what i did i will simply take a graph uh, so using network x i am drawing this graph so that <clears throat> you can see and understand so this is the graph very simple graph consisting of four nodes only and the node features i am assigning using uh, torch dot a range so i'll be printing so that you you will be able to see like what are the node features and adjacency matrix uh like i can calculate the adjacency matrix using uh network x also but uh, because this is a very simple graph so i haven't bothered you know, so i have simply uh like pre-defined not predefined but uh i have defined this uh, adjacency matrix by myself so this is the adjacency matrix and if you can see the the leading diagonal elements all are one so this simply means in the original adjacency matrix i have added the identity matrix that means we are considering the self node also as a feature so if you will run this you will see the node features so there are four nodes and every node has two features so four cross two four rows two columns so this is your node feature matrix and the adjacency matrix is as you have already defined. Now let's apply the GCN to it. And for simplicity, we initialize the linear weight matrix as the identity matrix. So why I am initializing the uh, this as an identity matrix? Because uh, if you will do the self calculation, uh, so you will be able to verify the results if i will initialize it randomly so it will take uh, like any random and the calculations will become complicated so in order to make it simpler i have uh, initialized the weight matrix as an identity matrix okay so now let's instantiate our this gcn layer so layer is equals to gcn layer which we have already uh, implemented this class gcn layer class and c in c out is two so very simple we want to keep it the input parameters and the output parameter dimension i want as two only so the layers dot projection dot weight dot data so this is how i am going to initialize our weight and identity matrix so you can see the two cross two one zero zero one and the biases also is zero zero so just for the shake of defining so the bias is zero i'm not considering any bias at this point of time and because we are uh, i am doing it for the only one forward pass no backward pass or no calculation of loss nothing just this is just to show you like how the calculation will happen in the forward pass so uh, in order to do that we have to um, like put the gradient to false so torch dot no grad so it will not do the gradient reason so output features is equals to layers node features and adjacency matrix so um, this layer this is the model so uh, in in the model you have to pass the node features and adjacency matrix and uh, it will finally give you the output of the node features so now i'll be printing everything adjacency matrix node features and output features so if you will see so this is the adjacency, adjacency matrix and these are the initial node features 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and these are the output node features after performing one forward pass of gcn graph convolutional neural network so you can verify these results 
uh, by manually calculating as well. We will find the results same. Okay, so this was uh, on about implementation of GCN from scratch. Now we are going to discuss the implementation of graph attentional neural network GAT from uh, scratch. So again, the story will remain the same. The uh, fundamental structure of defining it into a PyTorch will remain the same. <coughs> so let's start. So GAT layer is the graph attention module. We are again inheriting the NN dot module in this. And this time what we have to pass C in, C out, you already know the input dimensionality, the output dimensionality, number of heads. So as you, this has already been discussed in the class <coughs> while uh, you are being taught the graph attention network. Like if we want to perform the multi-head attention, so we have to define the number of heads as well. So by default, I'm keeping it as one. And if you, <coughs> at the end, if you wanted to concatenate all your, all your head results, then it's a by default true and alpha is 0 0.2. That is for the value negative slip of the rookie value. So I have already written all these parameters. What does they mean? What do they mean? So it's written here as well. Again, self dot number of nodes is equals to number of number of heads is equals to number of heads, concat heads, concat heads. So this is all very simple. So now if self dot concat heads, so if now what if we are concatenating heads instead of taking the average so you have you are already aware of these methods like you can either concatenate those heads or you can take the average of those heads so if you are using the concatenation then you have to put the number of output features must be the multiple of the count of heads so in order to do that this is the logic we are going to use now next is the sub module and the parameters entered in the layer. So again, uh, the story will remain same. First, what we have to do, we have to first uh, follow the same process as we did in the GCN. So we have to project our node features. And after that, we will calculate the attention by considering two nodes, that means one edge. So self dot projection and n dot linear c in c out into number of heads why number of heads because it will depend like how many number of uh, heads we want in our attention again self dot a a is nothing but the uh, the but the weight matrix when we are uh, concatenating the features of two nodes in order to calculate the attention coefficient alpha so yeah so self dot a and then dot parameter again toss dot tensor number of heads two into c out one per head so this is the again weight parameters so there i am defining the size of this and leaky ratio initializing the leaky ratio leaky ratio as well now initializing from the original implementation so uh, we are now <coughs> initializing the parameters of projected weight and a so both the parameters are initialized this time using the Xavier uniform distribution. So how you can do that? So this is how you do that. And after that, we are going to define the forward pass. So in the forward pass, what we are going to pass the node features, the adjacency matrix and print attention probabilities. So if this is just for if you wanted to print the attention probabilities, if it's by default, I'm keeping it as a false, but uh, at any point of time if you think like you should print you can keep you can uh, like pass this parameter as a true while instantiating this GAT layer so the batch size and number of nodes so this time number of features so the node features the size of node features uh, you can calculate or if the graph is very small you just know like uh, in the previous graph we the node feature size was four cross two four nodes two features uh like two features per node so the first dimension of that we are considering is a batch size and the number of nodes again this number of features dot size so this is how you will uh, like calculate the number of nodes and the batch size 
After that, you simply need to apply these linear layers. So the node features, again, the same thing, self plot projects and node features. You will pass the node features. So that will basically project uh, those node features by multiplying by those weight matrix. And after that, what you will do, you will node features dot view. Uh, you will simply convert it into batch size, number of nodes and number of heads. So the, in this dimension, you will convert. Now we need to calculate the attention logics for every edge of the adjacent symmetric. As you already know, like in order to calculate the attention coefficient, we have to consider two nodes and an edge is consistent of two nodes. So after that, what we need to do, we will simply return the indices where adjacent symmetric is not zero. So that means uh, we are returning an uh, edge, edge is equals to adjacency matrix dot non-zero as triple false. So this will simply return all the edges. Now, what you have to do, note features flat. So this is just the uh, uh, viewing of node features in a different uh, dimension. So node features dot view, again, we have to convert it into batch size into number of nodes comma number of heads. So if you are getting confused in this, you can simply uh, pick these lines and run individually in order to understand better. So uh, it is just nothing, just a like basic change in the dimension of the parameters. So after that, add edge indices row, we are uh, simply picking and the edge indices column. So row and column we are picking. And after that, A input, now a input is nothing now we are simply concatenating the features of two nodes so touch dot select index input node features flat and edge indices dimension zero so we will simply concatenate the features of two nodes okay now we will calculate the attention using multi-layer perceptron. So attention logic touch dot ion sub. So in this, we will pass this A input and the self dot A. So these are the weights for that. And these are the inputs. So the input and weights we are going to pass in order to calculate the attention logics. And <clears throat> after that, what we will do, we will apply the leaky value in the in those attention logics. Now we will map the list of attention values back into the matrix. So the attention matrix is equals to attention logits and all the non-zero elements we are going to pick. And simply we will perform this uh, again, the attention matrix, the adjacency matrix. So this will basically give you the attention values in a matrix form. Now weighted, uh, now simply we have to take the weighted average of the attention. So you already know like uh, there will be the attention for every edge and the we should take the weighted average of those attentions in order to do the normalization. So attention probabilities F dot. So we are doing it using softmax. If you remember the formula from the paper itself. So in there it is uh, very clearly mentioned that alpha is a is uh, nothing but the softmax of the like leaky value of A times the features of both the nodes concatenated. So this is how we are going to calculate the attention probabilities. And the node features. Now, if the head should be concatenated, we should do this by recepting, otherwise, take mean. So, if we wanted to perform the concatenation of heads, then we have to reshape it again. The node features should be reshaped into the batch size into number of nodes. Or if we do not want to do that, so we can simply take the mean as well. So, how you will decide this by passing this as a true or false, the concatenation of heads. So that for that, we have written it if self dot concatenates. So if that is true, so that will concatenate by reshaping it, else it will simply take the mean. And at the end, it will return you the node features.
So again, the same thing, the data will remain the same, the bias and the weight for the projection. And the, again, two comma two will be the input and output feature dimension. And the number of heads will be two. And so layer dot a dot data. So A is again the another weight matrix. So this time we are taking the values like these. And again, we are not doing the gradient descent. We are simply trying to see like how values will change if we'll apply one forward pass in that. So if you'll run this again, all the values will be printed. So the attention probabilities for both the attention heads and its efficiency matrix input feature. Now you can see your output feature output tensor of features is like this. So this concludes the implementation from scratch of GCN and GAT. Now we will very quickly see how you can simply uh, use or use this PyTorch geometric library in order to use these algorithms. So there are three types of tasks as it has already been discussed, like you can do the node classification, edge classification and graph classification. So I'm very uh, considering very simple uh, the node level task. And this is the semi supervised node classification on the graph structure data. And for that, I'm considering one benchmark data set. This is the very popular uh, platinoid data set from from that we will take the Cora data set. So this is a citation <coughs> network among papers. So the all the essential uh, information about the Quora <coughs> is I have given here. So we will simply import this data set from TOS Geometric <coughs> and we will uh, do the normalization of the features also while we are importing. So this is how we will import the data set torch geometric dot data sets platinoid root is basically the folder name where you wanted to store your data and the name is the Cora. So data set data is equals to data set zero and let's see what is in the data. So if we'll see data X consists of 2708 2708 scientific publications. So basically there are 2708 nodes and every node has a 1433 features. So vector of 1433 elements of each publication. So 27, 2708 nodes and every node has 1433 features. As n in edge indexes is this and <coughs> label for every node. Again, the train mask, validation mask and the test mask is also given. Now we are going to uh, implement graph convolutional neural network GCN using PyTOR geometric library. So uh, from TOS geometric dot NN, we can import GCN con. So this is the very simple graph convolution what we have just implemented uh, above. So now we just do not need to implement. We will simply uh, like we will follow the same structure because in the PyTorch, this is the standard structure that has been followed. So we'll define a class GCN and inherit the this NN dot module. <coughs> so we are setting the seed as 12. So every time you will run so that will uh, I mean select the same number of parameters. So self dot con one. So we are applying the two convolutional GCN layers con one and con two. So again, data set dot number of features and the hidden channels. Hidden channels we will be passing. So from input features will be the data set dot num features and the output features will be the number of classes in which we have to map. So we basically we have to map into the seven classes. So this is how we will uh, define the forward self x edge indexes and we will self dot con of one x comma edge index apply ReLU use the dropout and again we will apply the this convolution to which will take the hidden chain uh, hidden channel and the edge index x and edge index it will take and it will finally return you the x is the basically feature. 
and now instantiate the model gcn hidden channels we are considering hidden channels simply means the dimension <coughs> at 16 so if you'll print the model it will show you like in the convolutional one gcn one we are taking 1433 these are the number of nodes input nodes and 16 is the hidden features and after that from 16 hidden features of a node we are mapping it to seven features so this again the model and now we'll set the optimizer we are using the adam optimizer here with the learning rate of 0.01 and the cross entropy loss and now we'll define the train so model dot train so in the train function we will simply do the model dot trains in order to initiate the training optimizer dot zero grad so this will basically clear the gradients first and <coughs> this out is equals to model data dot x and data dot edge index so edge index and the x <coughs> is the input feature so it will perform one single pass and after that we will calculate the loss do the back propagation and do the optimization based on gradients and it will return the loss so again so similar is the for the test in the test it will return the test accuracy and now we'll run it for 100 epochs and let's see how the model performs so if you run it for the 100 epochs you can see the training loss is 57.30 if you will print the test accuracy so test accuracy is 79.10 so again the very similar process will be followed for the gat so that is the graph attentional neural network so uh, <clears throat> so everything will remain the same you can put the seed value as 12 if you put 12 here i am putting the 12 here as well and the remaining story story will remain the same so we'll define we'll like define a class of uh, this gat graph attentional neural, neural network and we will define a forward pass and after that we will instantiate the model and print the model define the optimizer and the criteria in order to calculate the loss we will train the model we will test and now let's just run the model for 200 epochs and let's see how model performs So for the 200 epochs, we are getting the accuracy as so <coughs> the loss is 69 0.6963 <coughs> for the validation and for the test. So if you wanted to check the test accuracy, so in this this time it's 0.9643. So you can see by using this attention, we have increased the, uh, like the model is showing the increment in the test accuracy. So this concludes uh, this tutorial. I'll be uploading the notebook and uh, this tutorial video in the course web page. Thank you.